Hi, and welcome to this module on casting. So this is our fourth module in the fundamental series. So if you haven't yet, please feel free to check out our previous modules in the series. And in this one, we'll be specifically looking at casting, which is converting one data type to another. Um, and that's something that's commonly required in all programming languages. Um, and then one example might be you might want to convert a numeric value to a string, for example, in order for it to be displayed as part of a message. So what we've seen in the previous module with our standard output and printing messages um, in order to include our num numeric values in that, we would have had to cast them to a string. So in this module, we'll be going through how to cast. So looking at implicit casting and then explicit casting using our cast operator, which is the dollar sign. And then we'll spend some time looking specifically at casting textual data um, as it because they need to be treated differently to our numerical and temporal data types. Okay, so let me just hide this contents page and we can get started. So first of all, we're going to be looking at implicit casting. So in this example here, we've got some time data types. So if we, we just check back on our, we've got a reference card open. We remember this from our, our first module in the series when we looked at data types and um, we can use type to find out which data types we have. So if we run this cell, we'll see we've got, first of all, a data type of type minus 18H. Then we've got a date type of minus 14H. So if we just go double check that on this side, we see, yeah, minus 18H means I've got a singular atom type of a second, which looks like this. And then we also had, I think it was minus 14. So minus 14 is our date which is here. So when we add those two together with a simple plus operator, what happens is KDB automatically understands that you're trying to add two temporal data types and the combined result will actually be a timestamp, which is our minus 12 hit. So if we go back and check minus 12 over here, 12 is our timestamp, which is a combination of date and a time span that's split up with this D in the middle. So in that way, adding these temporal data types together, we actually haven't explicitly cast it to be this new type. Um, under the hood, KDB does that for us. Okay, um, so other operations also can have these types of effects. So for example, when you divide two long values, so this is four is a long, two is a long. When I divide these, you see I get a float returned. Um, and that's something that will happen with this division operator always, um, even if you're not dividing floats by each other. Um, if you wanted to avoid this, we have um, the handy keyword that we did come across already, I think. Um, if we go to a reference card keywords and we see div up the top, it will return the greatest whole number that doesn't exceed this. So for example, if I didn't want this to be changed to a float and I wanted a whole number, I could have used div and that would have, if I ran type in this, I would still have my long, so my seven, minus seven H, head back to data types here, seven is a long. So that hasn't changed there. Okay, so there's a short exercise here. What data type do you expect from the output below? So in this example, we're adding two, which is a long, to a date. So if you wanna have a quick check of that, and then we can see that it's gonna return a data type of date. So it's gonna increase this date by two days. So if we run this, you'll see that's increased from the first to the third. And then in this example, we're adding a time span to a time. So this one here is our time. This is our time span. We know that with this, this D out in front. Um, and we add those two together, we end up getting a time span result. So um, that's important to note that the more granular of the two types, is the one that will be returned when you're doing addition. Um, okay, um, so yeah, we're just repeating that point here with our little QB. So you're <clears throat> when you add two types and if they are compatible, it's going to resolve to the data type with the highest level of granularity. Okay, so that's our implicit casting within Q. And we do see that quite often with the temporal data types. Um, but what about when we aren't doing implicit casting and we need to do it explicitly? We use our cast operator. So that's our dollar sign. So again, if we weren't sure what this was doing and we've seen this come about in the wild, we could head to our overloaded glyphs page, click on dollar, and we'd be able to determine which one of these it is. So we're looking at this one here, cast at the minute. Okay, so first of all, we look at non-textual data 
Um, so when we want to do casting with non-textual data, we've got three approaches we can, we can take. The first one is we can use the symbol name. So that's our symbol name as, as is on our data types page. So if we head back to data types um, on our reference card, we'll see the name here. So that's that, that name. The second option is its character letter, which is in the case of float is F. So that comes from this C column. And then the third option is the short value or the short name. So that would be the, this numeric with it always got a H at the end of it. So that's coming from this N column. And then we add on H as well to indicate it's the short value. So basically our three ways to do casting on non-textual data is using one of these three columns. So your first three columns in your data types is, is your three options of how you can um, cast your data. So let's take a look with some numerical data types so we've got this list of longs, so we've got 10, 20, 30. We're gonna use um, first using the symbol name, which is backtick float and then cast and the list passing at the list. The second one is its character letter. So we pass that in, in between a, a string. So um, it's cause it's our character letter. And then the third option is we just pass the short value. So if we run these three things, you see we get the same three things I put it here. So we can choose whichever of those we feel more comfortable with. And just to prove that these are actually equivalent, we are doing some matching down here. So just to show you again, this is our infix notation. We're also just showing you the option here to use functionals. Remember when you see the square brackets, that's our functional notation. Um, we could have just put this down here um, and we're just showing you can cast using our symbol name and then we're using our match operator just to check for the equality and then we're using the, the character value here. And similarly, we're doing the same thing with the, the short value and we should be getting one B's back, which we are. So we know that these are all equivalent. Okay. Yeah, in the next example, we're gonna take a list of integers. So that's defined by this I at the end of our list. That means these are all integers. And we're gonna cast to three different data types, three different ways. So the first one is a date using the symbol name. The second one is a time type using our short value and the third type is a byte using the character value so if we run that we'll see what we get and it's just interesting to note zero integer is actually the first day of the millennium so that's the first date in kdb so if you put in um, minus one here you'd see that was the day before the first day of the millennium here um, and then when you cast to a time type here you can see we get time results here and then we get our bytes resulted here and just to note as well when you're going from a more granular to a less granular type so for example a float to a long in this example here we've got 5.4 when we cast to a long we would actually only get the value of five returns so let's just do that and see is that what happens um, so I need to have my back tick at the front. So yeah, I'm only getting five returned. So then if I try and go back to a float by casting that back, and my got my dollar sign, you'll see my float returned as 5F. So I've lost that 0.4 granularity. So that's something to just be aware of, especially when you're loading in data. Um, you know, it's always a good idea to test, first of all, with the more granular level um, and to, to, to double check those types. Whereas if you say load all your numeric values as longs, for example, you might be losing the granularity you need maybe later on. Okay. Um, so there's a short exercise here. So just casting this value to the following types. So a real and a Boolean. So have a go with that. And then once you're happy, um, we'll just take a look at temporal data types. So we were showing there our numerical data types, temporal data types we can operate on in the exact same way. So we can use our symbol name here. So we've got long and we're casting this date, which is remember dot z dot d. Um, if we, I'm not sure what that is, we can always check out our dot z dot d namespace. So dot z dot d is giving us our date. So that's our system date. Um, and if I convert that to a long, what that's actually returning is number of dates from the beginning of the millennium. So the 1st of January, 2000. Um, and then when I have a time here and I cast a time to along, what I get is the number of milliseconds from midnight. And then when I have a date plus a time, which we know 
is a timestamp, um, we get the number of milliseconds from midnight, specifically on the 1st of January 2020. So that's just something interesting. These numbers actually do have meaning <laughs> behind them, in case you're wondering. Okay, um, so what do you expect as outputs from the below? So we're casting these time data types to minutes. So when we run this, you'll see we get 17.55 and you might have expected that this gives 17.56, but it doesn't. So in when you're casting from a more granular level to a less granular level with your temporal data types, it doesn't round up, it doesn't round down, you'll just lose that granularity. So that's important to be aware of. And you can see here we have this option here. So instead of passing the word hour, we have this HH. And that would just return these hours. Okay, so try this exercise. So cast this time to each of the following types. So that's just going over what we've discussed so far. And I shall see you in the next video.